can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life, which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. I believe it's going to help a lot of us. And but before I say that, I want to make this known. See, everything that is being said, everything that is being done, or said, or preached, or taught, the difference has always been, I have said it a couple of times, or many times rather, the difference between one believer to another believer, the difference between you and another person is in this, that you hear God's word and you put it into practice. It is that practice, it is that obedience that separates you from another person that is called a believer. Whether the believer is in, in America, whether he is in Africa, whether he is in Asia, wherever they are, what makes the difference is in the level of your obedience to the word of God. It is that obedience, that is what you do with what you have. That is what makes the difference. The difference is in not having an encounter. Encounter is good. The purpose of that encounter is to enable you to do. Until obedience is complete, there is no difference between you and someone who is not even born again. So, if you are not in the habit of uh, laboring to the place of obedience, you will remain the same way. Of course, there is nothing like being static in life. Is it that you are moving forward or you are moving backward? That's what makes the difference. It's not in the how many hours you spend praying. It's not in the how many days or years you spend fasting. All your prayers and all your fasting and everything that you do boils down to obedience. Jesus defined it. He said, it is only those that do the will of my Father. It is only those that endure to the end. Not only those, not those who fast to the end. Not those who make sacrifice to the end. Not those who worship to the end. Those who endure, obedient, they stay there. That's what makes the difference. Amen. So today, this is, um, let me just say, a new year, a new season. I prefer to use season, but a new year for those of us who will have problem with that. Oh, Pastor, but we're in a new year. Okay, so this new year, the beginning of the year, January. I want to start by reading, okay, let's go back, back, back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. It says, Genesis 1, 1 says, in the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. So in the beginning is God. Hello. And I want you to pay attention. In the beginning, God. So if you want to begin your year in a very good footing, in a most excellent way. If you want to start this year in the most excellent way, you've got to begin with God. Don't begin with any other thing. Don't start with any other thing. 
leave out every other thing that you are used to, that you know that you've been doing. This year, 2022, begin your year with God. Begin January with God. Begin everything that you're going to do this year with God. And I'm going to show you in a very, very, very practical way you are going to do that. And this is also for those of you who do not know where to start from. Like I have always said, if such a person will agree or will believe, just like that young man that just came out from the prison and claimed to be born again, and he came here, he said they gave him the address, and he located Oak House Church, and then he, he was offered to be given an accommodation and then put his life together and settle down and then begin to grow. So, but what he preferred was in the night when they asked him to stay over the night so that by tomorrow they will sort out his um, every other thing. So, in the night, what he did was to clean up the house. Collected all the phones of the people who were the security guys. Collected their phones. Collected the key from them. They were still sleeping. He opened, he opened the gate, the back gate. And then hung the key for them. Where they will see it when they wake up. In the night and he vanished. So he does not want to begin his year with God. He wants to begin it with Satan. He wanted to begin with Satan. And he has started with Satan. And so there are all many people like that. In the beginning, God, so you begin with God this year. And I'm going to tell you in a very practical way how you can do that. Even if you don't know anybody, even if you are the poorest man on the planet Earth today, if you begin with God, by the end of the year, you will have every reason to lift up your hands and say there is a lifting. No matter who you are, whether you went to school or you didn't go to school, Whether you have accommodation or you don't have accommodation. Whether your business is moving forward or moving backward. Just listen. So give me John. So in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. We're going to come back to this. But just go to John chapter 1 verse 1 again. In John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was what? So that God you are going to begin with is actually his word. So in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. So you begin with who? You begin with God and you begin with his word. God and word. Word and God. This is the reason why Acts of Apostles chapter 20, 32 says, Paul said, after being with them for a space of three years, he was going to leave them and never to come back to them until they meet in heaven. And so Paul said, now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, to God and his word. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up Build your business up. Build your career up. Build your marriage up. Build everything that can be built. You'll be able to build it up. You'll build up your health. And now, brethren, I commend to you, I commend to you, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So these two things, if you can pay attention to it, <clears throat> and like I said, I'm going to show you a very practical steps 
if you commit yourself to it, you can go to a desert and you can create water from the desert. And I am not missing word about it. I am not joking. I, I just a plain word, as clean, as plain as it is. And I myself that is talking to you, I have used it, I have practiced it, and I am still practicing it. And it is still working. <clears throat> so, getting to the word of God. That is why God has declared sovereignly. Without doubt, according to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, he said, And he humbled them and suffered thee to hunger and to feed and to feed thee with manna which thou knowest not, neither did thy father know that he might make. Verse 3, verse 2. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know that what to know what was in thy heart, whether thou thou wouldest keep his commandment. Or no. Verse 3. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and to feed thee with manna which thou knowest not, neither did thy father know that he might make. Verse 4. Thy raiment wax not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Why is God doing that? He tells us so that you will know that man shall not live only by bread, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Okay? I think it's in verse 2. Is it verse 2 or verse 1? Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. <clears throat> But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, by, but by what? Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God shall man live. You are going to live your life by the word of God. And I'm going to show you. Because I love practicals. You agree with me that the Bible said that wherever we are two or three witnesses, where we have two or three witnesses, every truth is established. You know what it means to establish? It means you can bet your life on it. You will not die. It means it is settled. It is established. There is nothing that can make it not happen. Where you have two or three witnesses is the same way where the Bible says in that Genesis 41:32 that when you have a dream twice, when God showed you a dream twice, consistently twice, what it means is that that thing that you are being showed is established. It's the same as saying that at the mouth of two or three witnesses, every truth is established. So when we see it, we know it is established. So that's why I'm reading out for you now. That the Bible said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded where? Out of the mouth of God. You see it in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. He says the same thing. So at the mouth of two witnesses, Moses said it, and Jesus Christ also confirmed it. Two different people at different times. So it is established. And now he says. The just shall live by his 
faith. Living by faith means living by the word of God. Living according to God's word. If you read Habakkuk chapter 2, 4, you, hear, you see what he said, that the, the just shall live by his faith. In Romans chapter 1, Paul was writing, he said, the just shall live by his faith. Again, the same Paul in Galatians 3, 11 said, the just shall live by his faith. The same Paul as somewhere in Hebrews 10, 38, he says, the just shall live by his faith. It is established. There is no other way to live than by faith. And living by faith means living by the word of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but you live by every word. Every word that proceeds, continuous tense, proceeds from the mouth of God if you live by it. And then let us look at that word of God now, because you see, when we talk about the word of God, and many of times we don't understand the difference between the word of God and the, any other word. There is the word of man. There is the word of God. That is why it is called the word of God. It is written that way. It is not the word of man. You So there is the word of man and there is the word of God. So there has to be a separation. It is that word of God that you are going to live by. The one that proceeds out of the mouth. That's the one you are going to live by. Not the one that proceeds from every other source. You live by the word of God. By every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If you stand on it, you will never go down. If you act on it, you will never go down. If you believe it, you will never be disappointed. The one that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So, faith is the end result. So, if you are going to live now, see, there are five things you must do. When you do it, eh, you can create water from this place. They can send you to the wilderness. You know what is wilderness? They can send you there. If you do these five things, follow it, you will bring water from that wilderness. That your business that have, that have struggled over the years, if you do this, that business is going to turn around. Do you know why? Because the word of God is, has the ability to do it. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. What did he say? For the word of who? Remember, it is not the word of man. He said, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He said, because the, for the word of God is what? Quick. I'm not going to spend time dwelling on this because I believe that every one of you must have... Uh, gone through the Berea Academy and if you have gone through the Berea Academy you must come across this and if you have come across this it is taken for granted that you understood it so if you don't understand it that is the reason why God said before you if God, if God permits Hebrew 4.3 he said if God permits we can leave the principles of the or laying of the foundation of the principles of oracle of God and then move on to what? To maturity. If God allows you. So before God will allow you to go to maturity and hear about the deep things, there are deep things of God. Before you can venture into those areas, God will have 
approve of you because you have understood this. So if you have not understood this, I'm not going to spend my time now going through this. I just want to highlight what the word of God says. The nature of God's word we are talking about. The Bible says that for the word of God is quick. I explained to you what it means to be quick. And the word of God is also powerful. And the word of God is also sharp. And the extent of that shall be defined. It is sharper than two-edged sword. It pierces through the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and of marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. John chapter 6 verse 63 says, Jesus said, for the word that I speak to you, they are life and they are what? Spirit. He said they are spirit and they are it is the spirit that quickened the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So what he means is that when you apply this word, when you use it, there is life inside it. It has a quickening power. It can quicken, make alive, bring back to life that which is dead, that which is struggling, that which is dying. It can stop that death and then bring back life. You can speak to those dead bones in the valley of dead bones and they will come out alive. Because the word of God, it has an inherent life, ability of God inside it. And of course, when you read 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, it tells you that the word of God is also effective. And that is why Isaiah 55, 10 tells us, 11, he says, just like the rain cometh down on the earth and uh, never go back and return titter, but he watered the earth and then provide the food and all of that. He says, so shall the word that had proceeded out of my mouth, it will not come back to me void, but it must accomplish that whereunto I have sent it. Give it to me, please, be fast. Okay, First Thessalonians 2. For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing. Because when you receive the word of God, you see what they received. is not the word of man. He said, when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, you receive it not as the word of man. You must receive it as the word of God. Not as the word of man. If you receive it as word of man, it will not profit you anything. Just like you are hearing it now and you are thinking, you are, if you are receiving as the word of Pastor Fred or the word of the minister of God and all of that, no, it will not profit you. What, how you regard it is that you take it as what? God has spoken and whenever God speaks, no other person can unspeak what God has spoken or what God has said. You dare not. It's a no-go area. Except God has not spoken. But if God says it, we will come to that. And so, God, which you heard, uh, which you heard of us, receive it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which is what? Which effectually worked also in you that believe. It's very effective. That's why you say, it shall not return to me void. Whatever you sent it, it must do that job you sent it to do. But now, I'm going to show you how you are going to take that word and put it into that situation and it will deliver to you. If there is barrenness, it's going to give you fruit. If there is sickness in your body, it's going to take away that sickness and give you health. There is a how to bring it. The first like I told you, there are five. If you do it, both in your church or in your ministry, in your marriage, or wherever, is going to turn around. Number one, the word of God will have to. 
come. The number one is the word of God. What about it now? You must receive that word of God. You see that word of God? You must receive it. If you don't, because in the beginning was the word. You must start with the word. You must receive that word. If you don't receive it, there is no way we have, there is nothing we are talking about. The word you must receive. If you don't receive the word, there is nothing to talk about. So if you are not interested in receiving the word, then God is not interested in you. So you can as well go on and do it your own way. We are talking about those who are working with God. The very first thing that you are going to put in, the, in place is the word of God. You must find it, you must receive it. And then now, in receiving that word of God, there is a preparation. You know, in the Jewish tradition, when they want to read the Torah, that is the Old Testament they written, when they want to read it, you know what they do? They will wash their hands, wash their legs, clean their eyes, clean their ears, and they sanctify themselves. They do ablutions and all of that. Because they regard that word to be what? Not just that they regard it, because that word is holy. It's a holy word. The word that proceeds out of a holy God is holy. You don't just handle it anyhow. You don't just budge into it anyhow. This is one mistake that we make. I want you to take, be taking note. And I'm going to show you from the scripture in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. He said, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, do what? Verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may do what? Grow thereby. So, the word of God, number one, you must receive it. But in receiving the word of God, this is what you have to do. If you have all these garbages in your life and all of that, that you know your life is bitter. You don't go to the word of God. In the Old Testament, what they do or what they used to do is to wash their hands and their legs and all of that. That's a physical one. So, but in the New Testament now, it is what is not washing of your hand and your eyes and your ears like they do today. It is by cleaning your heart. There is something that you can do on your own. There are those ones that you have the ability to do that God said, put away. Remember I said at the mouth of two or three witnesses. So give me James chapter 1 verse 21. Wherefore laying apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with what? Meekness, the engrafted word which is able to do what? Save your soul. If you don't do this, at the mouth of two or three witnesses, every truth is established. If you don't do this, you go, that word, you can't receive it. When you hear it, it flies over your head. And that is why when we sit in the church, you hear the word of God, only few, those of them who are, who are ready for it. They are the ones that receive that word. You see people who have bitterness in their heart, who have unforgiveness in their heart, who are keeping malice in their heart, who are jealous in their heart, who are envious. This thing is you. You are the one that allow it. So open up your whatever and let it go. You don't need to pray to God to help you to stop keeping malice. Stop it. That's what the Bible says, lay it aside. 
He didn't say you should pray to God to lay it aside. He said, lay it aside. And I have said it before. You see, the effectiveness of prayer is in praying the word. Pray, pray. Before you can be effective in prayer, before you can be an effective prayer person, before your prayer can be fervent, you must be rooted in the word. You must be able to divide the word of God. If not, if not, you just be praying, you open your mouth and be saying things. Things that are not founded in the scripture. It won't carry power because it's not the word of God. Remember, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So the first, I said, the first thing that you must do is what? You must, the word of God must be in place. You must receive it. And for you to receive the word of God, you have to clean up all those things that defiles, all those things that can make the word of God of no effect in your life. You have to remove it so that it can come in. Because all those malice and bitterness and envy and all of that are like a blind they will not allow the light to shine in, to come into your heart. As effective as it is, as powerful as it is, as, 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 as energetic as the word of God is, it will not be able to do this. Just like the blood of Jesus Christ cannot cleanse you, it cleanses sin only in the light. As he is in the light, when you walk in the light, when you have fellowship in the light, then the blood cleanses. If you are in the dark, the blood cannot come to the dark to clean it. You have to bring it to. That's why you say you confess it. The blood has the power to cleanse. But it cannot do that in the darkness. It cannot do that when you regard iniquity in your heart. You seal it and conceal it. You have to bring it. He said, but he that confess it, Bring it out. The blood who has the power, you will deal with it. The same way the word of God. Until you clean up this your life, you make sure you don't have any bitterness. You don't have any unforgiveness. You don't have any jealous or malice or whatever in your heart. There are other issues, though, but we are not, the one that you need, God say you should deal with it by yourself. Because you open that door, close that door. Is that clear? Make sure you do this first step. Then the second step, or the second thing you, are, you must do, is that, give me Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It comes by what? It comes by what? And how many times did you see the word hearing? How many times? <laughs> when a word is mentioned two times, it means it is established. Okay? you have to put the word of God in your heart. But before you put it in your heart, you have to make sure your heart is okay so that it will come in. That's the first. Then the second, you must hear the word. Because it's one thing for the word to come, it's another thing for you to hear it. So if you sit down in the church, for example, where the word of God is coming, Okay, this same word is able to build you, is able to offer you your inheritance, is able to change your destiny and your life. That is what it does. It's not so he's saying the Holy Spirit here. He's talking about the word. And then you are outside watching the cars and the motors that are moving on and then stay outside and be opening doors for people to come and hear the word of God because your life is not... Is a flip. He's lost. You don't do that. 
Or you sit down in the church and the word of God is coming and then you bring out your phone and then you are pressing something you are not hearing it. Or the word of God is coming and then you are talking with somebody beside you. You are not paying attention to the word of God. You are not hearing it because if you don't hear it, you have aborted the power of God coming to you to help you. That is why you hear us keep shouting, sit down, listen, don't open up your phone, shut down your phone, do all that, keep quiet. When you come into the house of God, give me Ecclesiastes chapter 5 for example, verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to do what? Than to do what? To give sacrifice of fools for they consider that they do what? When you come to the house of God, keep thy foot. Pay attention. If you don't hear it, if you don't hear it, nothing, nothing for you. That is why you come here and go back the same as you came. Or worse. So then faith cometh by hearing. And by hearing the word of God. <clears throat> what is hearing? I have it here written down. He says, hearing is an attitude of aroused interest and attention. It is a sincere desire to receive and understand the message that is preached. It is a sincere desire, hunger. That's what the understanding does. I mean, that is what hearing does. If you don't hear the word of God, so what are we doing? So you can now understand the reason why a life of many Christians are upside down. You can now understand why your problem will persist. And then what you spend time doing is fasting and praying. Which never got the problem solved. And even when you do, when you twist God's hand and all of that and use fasting and prayer and get it and all of that, somewhere along the line, the problem returns. Because you have not, you don't have the graps. You are not rooted in it. So you see the kinds of distraction. That is why you keep hearing, I think one of the messages we receive, you know, prophet, prophecies and all of that, the word of prophecy and all of that that came, he talked about distraction and distraction and distraction. When you are distracted, you can't hear what God's word. Paying attention. That is why even in the secular, in the school, there is a mark allotted for just being present in the class to hear. How can a student, when you know, when you see that there is a massive failure in the school for a particular exam they take, and just like what we'll be hearing, you and me, jam, come out, massive failure. Why it come out it was massive failure. The other one, massive failure. What is the key? You remember that doctor I was telling you, he said the key to passing your exam and all of that is to do what? To sit down and read. In this case, you sit down and hear. And what you are hearing is the word of God. Make sure what you are hearing is undiluted genuine word of God. You are hearing it is entering and make sure your heart is open to receive it. You are meek and humble. You don't hang yourself somewhere. You don't claim that you know it all and all of that. You just humble yourself and then hear the word of God that is able to build you up. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how poor you are. It will build you up. It has the ability, more than ability to build you. 
So, what is, what is the first step? The word of God, you must receive it. And I say, receiving the word of God, you know what you need to do. Then number two is what? You must hear the word of God. And I say the hearing is to create that interest and arouse interest and that understand attention that provoke you. You become desirous. Your life, your spirit, soul, and body is inside it. As you are listening, you are listening with everything that is inside you. Even when somebody is talking to you, you, are not, you don't want to hear what he's saying. Because God is speaking. When God is speaking, everybody keeps quiet. You don't talk. You don't laugh. You don't move. I would have even not because of them. I would have told Moses to show you the video clips in the church with services going on. We captured some of them. In the, many of them in the church, they brought out their phone. Some on WhatsApp, some on Facebook, some on Instagram, watching so many, right in the church. How can such people's life grow? How can your life be blessed? Is you are cursed. I'm not the one that's cursing you. It's you, you are cursing yourself. You are bringing curse upon you. How can God be speaking? How can God be talking? God is speaking. And you are, what? who is telling you what? What is the person telling you? That's the word of man. You are not going to live by the word of man, but by the word of God. So, I don't, because that person that is talking to me, when the word of God is going on, is my greatest enemy. Is robbing you of your future. Is robbing you of eternity. Is robbing you of everything that is of God. Is your greatest enemy. You know, when you see an enemy, you will not know. When you see enemy, your enemy, you will not recognize it. The same way, when you see Satan, you will not recognize Satan. When you see Jesus, you won't recognize him. When you see your enemy, you won't recognize him. The Bible says your enemy is a member of your very house. He's, he's on your domot. And you are looking at him, looking for him somewhere else. Those who fail to pay attention to the word of God. You know what happens to them? You know what happens to them? Give me Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. And then we read Isaiah 15, uh, 5. I'm going to show you. My people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to pay attention to the word of God. You are not interested. You pay lip service to God. And because you are not interested, how is it that you are not interested? Are you going to come out and say, I'm not interested in the word of God? No, nobody says that except those who are reprobates. But by your attitude... Do you know, you see here, you see people, they just get up and they walk away. You know what it means? You are walking out on God. You know how you'll be talking to somebody and the person gets up. You are talking to the person, he turns his back and walk away. That's what you do. You walk out on God. That's what we do. When the word of God is going on, you get up and you walk away. That's what you are doing. You don't have regard for his word. You don't tremble at his word. You know what Isaiah 66 said? Those who tremble at the word of God. We don't tremble. So how can he profit you? We walk out on God a lot. Hey, Pastor, does it mean that if I'm pressed, I cannot go out and ease myself? You take excuse. You take excuse. How do you take excuse? Pastor, I want to go and wee my wee wee. Or you say, Pastor. I 
I will bow down my head. I say, Lord, please, I am pressed. May I go and ease myself? I will be back very shortly. You say it with your mouth in your heart. And then you walk out, you go out. And when you go out, you come in. You tell him why you are going out. If you want to go and answer call, another person's, the word of man, tell him, Lord, there is a word of man that is coming. I want to pay, I want to go and answer you before I come, out, I come back and hear you. Please. Then you can go. Have respect for God. You walk out on God when you get up just like that you are because you feel nobody can control you. God can't control you. Nobody. And then you expect that word to work for you. Habba. And what I'm telling you, I'm showing you in the scripture, so I'm not the one making it up. He said, when you come to the house of God, he said, guard your feet. Stop. He said, hear ye that tremble at the word of God. Okay. Give me Isaiah 5.10. Isaiah 5.15, rather. Oh, let's go, go, to, go to 13. Go to 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and the honorable men are famished and their multitude dry up with taste. Why? Because you are not interested in hearing the word of God. If you pay attention, follow this step. I want to go back to it again. Number one, the word of God, search for it. Because you must live by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. You must bring that to your word. You must bring that word of God into your heart. And for you to bring it into your heart, you must clean up. You must sweep your house. You must clean up your house. You must dust and dress the bed and sweep the carpet and all of that. Make sure everywhere is clean. Then you can now settle down. That's what you do to your heart so you can receive the word. Then you know you are ready. And then when the word of God is coming, you have to pay attention. You have to hear it. You know why you need to hear it? Give me Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 20. My son, Attend to my, what does it mean to attend to my words? Pay attention to my word. Is it not? Pay attention. In other words, listen to my words. Okay? If you don't want to listen, now you sabi. You know, because sometimes we, we make it feel, we make it look as if God is a, church and God and religion and the Bible and all this prayer and all this thing, they are not really, so there is always an alternative. Look at so many people are not in church today. Not because of anything, because, but they have some other things that are more important and pressing. Because the best place to be at any point in time tea, is in the presence of God, is in the house of God. There are two places that God is on planet Earth. There are two places, there are not three. The first place where God is, is in your heart. You are the temple. And then the second is that God is present in the church. He said, my son, attend to my word. Incline your what? Your ears to what? To my saying. Pay attention. Listen. Verse 21. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Verse 22. For they are what? Life. How many of you want life? This is it. Because they are life unto those that do what? Find them. And health 
to all their flesh, divine health. You will not be weak. You will not be sick of any kind. Of any kind. You will see fibroid anywhere in your stomach. You will see cancer anywhere. You will see any problem. He will take it away. He will take care of it. If you will pay attention, if you will sweep off your heart and all of that, make sure that the world has a free access into your life. Once it comes in, it will do because he has the ability. He is quick. He is powerful. He is sharp. He is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. He can go through everyone. He says he's the discerner of the thought. He, he goes into the bones and the marrow. There is no part of your body it will not enter and get the job done. They are life unto those that find them and hell to all their flesh. Period. These are facts. These are truths. Remember I told you where two or three, I mean, at the mouth of two or three witnesses, every truth is established. And all I'm giving you, I'm giving you different people that have said the same thing at different times, confirming it that it is truth and it is established. So if you go by it, if you decide not to do any other thing and focus on this thing, it will deliver to you is a function of time. It will definitely come to pass. How many have I given you? Two stages. Number three. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. Number three is meditation. Uh -huh. This is where the boys are separated from the men. If you don't do this, you will not get the job done. No. No. What did he say? Paul was writing to Timothy. He said, he said so many things to him. He said, now, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to do what? To them, to those things you meditate. I have spoken to you. The word of God I have spoken to you. Meditate upon them. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting will do what? So that you will profit. So that you will succeed. And so your success will be glaring. Everybody will see it. They will know. It's not 419. Spend time. Meditation. Many of us, many, 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 many Christians, many. If you want me to, to give it in percentage, I will tell you that less than 5% of Christians spend time in meditating the word of God. Less than 5 all over the globe. I will show you what meditation does. I will read that for you. I will show you scriptures, what meditation does. Let's even start. So, Paul is saying here, meditate upon these things. Why did he say you should meditate? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Let the laws of this book not depart out of your mouth. Now, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, out of thy mouth, but thou shalt do what? Meditate. How? Therein, when? You meditate in the day, you meditate in the night. It is not enough for you to read the Bible. It is not enough for you to study it. You study it, then you sit down, you meditate on it. You think about what you've read. I will show you why you need to meditate. This book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thou, thou, 
that thou mayest observe to do, that thou mayest observe to do what? To do. Meditation, doing. If you want to see the ability to do, obedience. You know why we are struggling? It's obedience, lack of obedience. When the Bible says they slap you here, turn the other side. That's obedience, is it not? So how many of us are turning the other side when they slap you? No. Do you know the reason why? You've heard it. No meditation. There is something meditation that does in you. If you're meditating on something that is evil, it will do that same thing in the opposite. If, for example, Pastor John, now you are sitting down here and then you hear that there is a member of this church now that is speaking against you. As a matter of fact, this is what he has said about you. And you used to smile and greet that person. So what you do now is that when you go home, what do you do? Even while you are driving home, meditation starts. True or false? You will think about it. You will talk about it. You will reflect on it. And then when you go home, and then you wait for Monica to come back. Once he comes back, he says, can you imagine? You start all over again. You will sleep with it. You know what it does when you see that person that you used to greet and smile? You become bitter. Psalm 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that seeketh not the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinner, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight, verse 2, he said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he do what? Meditate how? At the mouth of two or three witnesses, every truth is established. Hello? Do you need to have a degree for you to do this? Do you need to have uh, go to secondary school? For you to do this. Do you even need a primary education in order for you to do this? So you see, that's why the, law, the word of God is so simple. And it is for everybody. It's no respecter of any person. So you see, it, life is a choice. Is a choice. Is your choice. Wherever you are now, whatever it is that is happening to you is your choice. You chose either by giving ignorance, painting and clothing yourself with ignorance and all of that. You don't want to hear, you don't want to do whatever. You do your, so is your choice. Then you see somebody who is religious and all of that, but is not, is your choice. Then you see another person who wants to succeed in life and he wants to start with God. And then this is how you start it. And he follows it up religiously. So number one, what meditation does for you? It's a meditation on the word of God. Remember, it is meditation on the word of God, not on what people say to you. Meditation on the word of God, it helps you to connect so deeply that it becomes part of who you are. It connects when you, make, when you do meditation, when you carry out meditation on the word of God. It helps you to, to connect to the word of God and it finally turns out and make you that person that you are. That's what the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter. Give me... Proverbs chapter 23, sorry, verse 7. For as man does what? So what happens? You are what you think. You are what you think. That's why Jesus said, pay heed to what you hear. 
you are what you hear. You are what you think. When you think on the word of God, when you meditate on the word of God, it becomes part and parcel. It forms who you are. There is a channel, there is a pipe, there is a connection between the ear and the heart. That word, it goes deep and finds its way into your spirit man. It forms you. That's why the Bible means when he says in Romans chapter 2 verse 2, he said, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind with the word of God. So when, when they say renewing your mind with the word of God, you study it, you meditate on it. Give me Hebrews chapter 4, 7. Again, he limited a certain day saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Eight. You harden not your heart. So give it dance. The word comes into your heart. As you keep meditating on it, it travel, that word travels, it gets into your soul. It soaks you. You know how somebody gets soaked under the rain? You know how somebody gets soaked? Initially, the rain starts falling, falling on you. You are wet, your clothes are not yet soaked. But after a period of time, you are, you are drenched in it. You are soaked, you are baptized in it. Remember the word you are taking, that word you are soaking. Remember Jesus said his spirit and his life. And that spirit and life is entering you. And it's going down to your spirit, spirit to spirit. Because man is a spirit, the word of God is spirit. So it must be spirit to spirit. That word must get to the spirit. It is through meditation, it comes to a point where you own it. That word becomes your own now. It's no longer, you hear what Paul is saying, according to my gospel. So he has come to a point where he has read it, he has meditated on it, he owns it, it becomes his own. So when he says, he speaks in the first person, just like the angels of God, when an angel of God appears and speaks, he speaks from the first person, he said, I said, I, the Lord said. So he didn't say the Lord said to tell you. He said, I said. Because they stand in the presence of God. They've soaked God and his word and everything permeated them. So when they start speaking, it is God that is speaking. It's not the angel. It's the word that is in them. That is what Jesus said. The word that is in me, he, what you hear is the word, is the, the word of the Father that is in me. That's what the, So that is what meditation does for you. When you sit and meditate on the word of God, it enters you. It forms who you are. As man thinketh in his heart, so he is. You become the word itself. The next thing that meditation does for you, when that thing becomes who you are, now, obedience to that word, doing that word becomes a walkover. That's what we now call grace. When somebody is doing it, you are no longer strong. You don't struggle. You don't struggle to avoid sin. You don't struggle not to lie. You are not struggling to not to steal. It becomes a lifestyle. It has entered the fabric of your life. It has entered every part, every department of your being. Give me Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt do what? He shall do what? And then thou shalt have 
good success. You see, he said, thou mayest, he said, when you meditate on it day and night, he said that you may, may observe to do what? To do the ability to obey the word of God. It has entered your spirit man. Submission will no longer be a problem to you. Loving your wife and your husband will no longer be a problem to you. Doing all the obedience to the word of God will no longer be a problem. You will not struggle. That is that just like how you don't struggle to hate somebody. You don't do you struggle to keep malice? Do you struggle to keep malice? It just hello. But when you get yourself meditating on the word of God, it will get to a point where you will struggle to keep malice. You will struggle to lie. Even when you want, it won't, it, the thing won't come out. You be, it becomes your, 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 your default mood. It's meditation that brings it that, to that level. Give me 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. 2 Timothy 2, 7. Consider what I say. What does consider mean? Consider to consider means what? To think. It means to meditate. It means to reflect on what I have said. Think about what I have said. Go, think about it, and then come back to me. So he said, consider what I say, and the Lord give thee what? Understanding of all things, in all things. So when you meditate, the spirit of understanding comes. If not, haven't you been praying, God, give me the spirit of understanding. God, give me the spirit of understanding. And so, I have told you in everything spiritual with God, there are two dimensions. You don't face one and leave the other. You, you pray, there is one that comes through word. The other one comes through the spirit. There is a spirit of understanding and there is understanding that comes through the word of God. The two must, you must, you must go for the two. I will tell you when the spirit of understanding, when, is, when you're going to bring it in. So, I'm just talking to you about what meditation does. Another thing that meditation does for you. Have you, have you ever heard about the word passion? Passion for souls. <laughs> Lord, give us heart for soul. Hey, stop it. It doesn't work. It's a wrong prayer. It doesn't get answer from heaven. That's why I say you must learn how to divide the word of If you don't, you'll be praying. A lot of prayers we pray, they are, they are empty. They don't cross the ceiling. Give me a heart of obedience. So if, if God answered, so how many, where are the obedience? Where is the obedience? Thou shalt meditate on the word of God so that thou may observe to do. But you avoid this and you're asking him to give it. You, you know, we like shortcuts. We don't want to spend time to walk. Studying the Bible is your, you know how somebody say, I've gotten a walk. I got in a job. You know how you are write application and then you go to submit and then they call you for interview and then they take you and then every morning you go to work, you come back, you go to work, you come back. It is studying the word of God is, is, is greater than that. It's more than that. It's sitting down your task, your mind. 
is a walk on his own. It's a very big walk. So when you talk about passion, let me show you, let me tell you how passion comes. See, you can't have passion for anything until you hear about that thing. You can't have passion for anything until you hear. Why is uh, somebody being passionate about girl child? Because girls are being molested and all of that. And you see the person, he will take it upon himself. He's a like man. He doesn't sleep. If you see him, you see what is driving this guy? What is it that is driving this guy? What is it that makes this person so passionate about this thing? What has he seen inside of this? Because they ha he has heard what they did to so-and-so women, to so-and-so girls. And so, the person now sat down because you heard it. You went through it. You think about it. You thought about it. You reflected on it and all of that. And as you are reflecting, there is a holy anger that wells up from within you. There is an anger, a holy one, that boils up from within you. Is that anger, that whatever that boils up. When you hear Jesus, the Bible says concerning him, he said, the zeal of my father's house has consumed me. His passion, he was passionate about his father's business. Because he says, my meat, my desire, my hunger, my longing, this is what he has been desiring, this is what he has been thinking about, this is what he has been meditating on. And so that thing has entered him and became, he has gripped him. He has taken possession of him. Now that thing, when this thing happens, that, that person, it becomes a movement. It's no longer just a vision. It becomes a movement. You know when you see a movement, you can't stop it. You kill the people that started it, the next one will come follow up. You kill them again because he has transferred the same thing to all these people. So when you say, give me passion for soul. Look at the people that are even praying for the passion for souls. Look at how they, if you are passionate about soul, you know how you pray about it. If you are passionate about something, you know how you go about it. The thing is that we don't have that passion. The reason is because we don't spend time meditating along. Where, you see If God gives you passion for souls, that thing, it can't happen because you are fasting and praying about it. There are people who have been fasting and praying after souls and all of that is still not there. When we are, what we are talking about is an unresolved passion and compassion. It drives you. This is why somebody who has been born again 20 years ago, you come back again 20 years later, the, the person is still on fire. The fire hasn't gone down. 30 years later, the person is still pushing. 40 years later, the person is still on the job. As if to say he has not even started. Something is driving, that thing has entered his soul. It comes by meditation. Zeal. So how you keep it, you know, when you have this understanding, because meditation will give you understanding, and then when you now begin to com contemplate in what you have understood, the more you contemplate on it, the more that passion keeps boiling. The more you contemplate on it, the more it keeps boiling, and it keeps driving you. So like I said, if you want to create something from nothing, the first is you invite God's word. Clean up your heart so that the word will enter. Number two is you do what? You have to pay attention to the hearing of the word of God. Respect God's word. Don't walk out on God. Number three, you do meditation. I've shown you what meditation does. 
and all of that. That's number what? Number three, the fourth one. The fourth one is called confession. Like I told you, at the amount of two or three witnesses, it is established. There is nothing you can, you can argue it for all, for all I care. That's your business. I don't have time for that. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we do what? We speak. So you must speak it. You must speak. You must not fold your mouth. But before you do the speaking, you have done the meditation. That word has entered inside your soul. It is from there now it's coming out. It's not from your head. If it comes from your head, <laughs> it won't do anything. It won't lift a spoon from the ground. Hebrew chapter 4 verse 14. At the mouth of two or three witnesses, every truth is established. Hebrew chapter 4 verse 14. Seeing then we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our what? What is profession? Profession means confession. So let us hold our confession. Now, not giving up. Let us hold on to our confession. There is something about confession. If you don't, If you don't proclaim it, it doesn't have power. I will explain to you. But let me finish first. Give me 10, 20, 1023. Hebrews 1023. Hebrews 1023. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without what? Wavering. For he is faithful that promised. So let us, because his word will never fall to the ground. His word is able, he's quick, he's powerful, he's sharper than any two edges. So he pierces through the dividing asunder of the soul and the body and the spirit. And he's a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. Because the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So do not waver. He has the ability to deliver. Confess it after you have meditated on it. Now, meditation brings that word word, it becomes part and parcel of you. When it's coming out, when you, when you open your mouth to say that, it, you are speaking from the first person. You know what I mean by first person? You are not saying uh, God said to me. You are just saying, thus say. You can now say, thus says the Lord. And you are not sinning. And you are not lying. It's different from all these kind of confession that we make. If, even this our creed and all of that, before that thing will work for you, let me be very honest with you, before it will make any advance in your life, you know what you do? You copy it. You copy it. You go home. You sit on it. You meditate on it. You sleep on it day in, day out, day in, day out, until that thing enters. When you now open your mouth to say it, when you are saying it, you will see the fire that is coming from you. Another person is saying it is dry because it, it has, fire has mingled with fire in your soul. It's coming out like fire. That's why your word, when you say it, it has weight. There are people when they are saying it, the word of God. Confession is, I see it everywhere. I see it everywhere. It, they will just quote, write one verse and all of that. And then they send it to the Facebook, either Facebook or WhatsApp and all of that. Yeah, according to the word of the Lord, say, he said this one, confess it in Jesus' name. Amen. If it is working, why are you still like that year in, year out? If it is working. You know what he said the word of God is? He's powerful. He's quick. He's sharper. It has the ability to deliver. It can never return back to God until it accomplished that we are until he has sent it. Why is he not accomplishing that? But we have been confessing it. It's not working. The reason why it's not working is because of this is lacking. And that is why I say this month, the beginning 
what you are supposed to do is actually calm down. Shut down a whole lot of activities. If it is possible for you, if it is possible, those of you who are working for other people, no? Even if you are working for yourself and all of that, there is an extent to which you can not shut down. But if it's, you have the ability, you can shut down and shut down 100%. Give the whole of this month. Spend time. Invest on it. When you finish and then you come out to speak. You know what happens when you speak? Give me Hebrew chapter 3, verse 1. We are for holy brethren, brothers and sisters in Oak House Church, and those who are listening online. Holy brethren of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession. Who? Jesus Christ. The Bible said that he is the high priest of our what? Profession. Profession means confession. Confession means profession. Speak. What does it mean? The high priest, the high priestly ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ now, there is something. He's not sitting at the right hand of God and uh, looking around. Uh, so who is, uh, what are you doing? There is something that he's doing. One of the things assignment, he has assumed another office. He is doing something. He is our advocate concerning every truth of God's word. One of his advocacy, what he's doing now in heaven. That's why he say he's a high priest of our profession, confession. So what he does is, that, remember Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. He said to Jeremiah, what seest thou? Jeremiah said, I've seen an almond tree. He said, thou seest well, for I watch over my word to do what? To bring it to come to pass. Every confession of God's word you make, it is Jesus Christ. He is the one that implements it. So the extent to which Jesus Christ is going to carry out his uh, priestly ministry in heaven, over you, on earth here, is dependent on the confession of your word in your mouth. So when you are saying something that is different from what he's saying, that is one of the reasons why you do meditation. So that you meditate on the word of God. So that you can speak what the word says. And when you say it, Jesus Christ, he gives the approval and the command. And then the angels go into operation. You can't be commanding angels. You can't, you can't command angels. You can't send them. They are under the command of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, are they not, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13, He says, are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to those who are heirs of salvation? When we come to Mount Zion, we come to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, where there are innumerable company of angels to do what? What are they doing? To minister for us. And how do they do that? They listen to the word of God. They obey the word of God. I can show you from the scriptures. In the book of uh, Psalm. They hearken unto the word of God. They don't hearken unto your word. Find it for me please if you can. Find it for me. Is in Psalm, I think Psalm, Psalm 103 verse. Are they not all, no, this is, this is bless the Lord Ye his angels that excel in what? In strength. That do the, his what? And hearken unto the voice of what? You see what they do. So you can't command them. You can't send them. They are committed 
to God's word. So when you confess God's word, Jesus Christ is our high priest. And so he will carry out, make sure that every word, everything, because he is the mediator. He makes sure that everything that concerns you is given to you, that nothing is denied you. So when you come before him and bring the word of God and all of that before him, he will make sure that that word he profits you. He makes sure that your profiting will appear to all through the angels. They obey his command. They are the command of God's word. You know what the Bible says in Romans chapter 4, verse 17? Romans chapter 4, 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before whom, before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead, and does what? And call things that be not as though they were. Let me tell you what it means. When you speak God's word, the angels, Jesus Christ, who is the mediator, he makes sure that your word is in line with his word. The angels go into operation. The evidence, listen very carefully, listen very carefully, the evidence to show that what you have said is the truth and is established. The sense knowledge does not accept it. They can't receive it. Sense knowledge cannot receive it. When you declare it, your eyes have not seen it. Your ears have not heard it. Your nose have not smelt it. Your mouth have not, your tongue have not tasted it. Your hand has not felt it. But it is real. Because everything that God has said, faith believes and reckons that it is truth and acts accordingly. But the evidence of it is not available to the sense knowledge. No, don't look for the evidence from the sense knowledge. It will not show. But after a time, it will come back. It will manifest. Say it. But you know what you are saying? You are saying the word of God. Because by every word of God shall man live. That is why meditation, you meditate on the word of God. So what is the first thing that I said? Let's go back to it again. Because repetition is the key to lasting impression. Because, because you said something once, you assume that people know it is a lie. It's not true. They don't. Until you say it over and over and then you go home and then reflect on it and then read it, reread it and search the scriptures. So the first one is that what? The word of God. Number two. You hear the word of God. Number three. You meditate on the word of God. Number four. You confess the word of God. And then number five. You walk. W-O-R-K. Don't go to work until you have done this for. If you do it, if you go to work before you do this, if you go to work before the first four, you are on your own. You are working by your own strength and your might and your power. And for by, no, by strength shall no man prevail. It is works after faith, not faith. Not, it is not a faith before works. It is works after faith has come. This is the process. Now, 
to show you finally I close the scripture. Go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, let's see how God created. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. He now, say how, he now told us and showed us how he created it. He said, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Hopelessness. Is your life hopeless? Is your life useless? There is nothing to write home about you. Everything about you. Nobody, can, nobody, you, nobody comes near you. Maybe that is how your life is. That is the condition God met the earth. And then look at what he said. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. He brewed. He was meditating. The Word, God, in the, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. In the beginning, God. God is the Word. So the Word came first. And all that, he, because Jesus, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, he, before God started the creation and all of that, he called upon what? Wisdom. Wisdom is a component of three things. The two other things that are in wisdom. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. They go together. So, in the beginning, God, the Spirit of God was brooding, hovering over the air, brooding, meditating, thinking. And then it was after that, upon the water. And then what happens? And God said, He called things that be not as though they were. You see the same process. Then if you come to verse chapter 2 in verse uh, 6, chapter 2, verse 6, 5, 6, 7, and 8, I think any of them. And then it's, the Bible said, and God formed. And every plant of the field on the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to do what? To till. So here God walked, W-O-R-K, verse 6. But there, were, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God did what? Formed man of the dust of the ground. He used his hand. He walked. Faith without works is there. So he molded man and then breathed into man the breath of life. And man became a living soul. This is how God worked and produced man that you see. This is how God worked and produced all these things that you see today. Give me Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, finally. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Verse 2. For by faith, for by it the elders obtained a good report. That is talking about faith. Verse 3. He said, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Through the word of God, we understand that these worlds were framed by the word of God. So what you are seeing today do not come from what you see, but they came from what is not seen. So that is why he calls things that be not as though they were. But before you are calling, you have to go through this process. So that the process is that the idea is to get the word of God into your soul, into your spirit man. Because many a time the word does not have access to our spirit. So we are just voicing it out. It's empty. You make empty confessions. So when you stay on the word of God, you brood on the word of God, you meditate on the word of God, you study the word of God, you share the word of God, you talk about it. Until that thing gains access into your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, it comes out with power, with fire. When you hear about fire, the person is fine. It means that the word has gained access into his heart. And then from the heart, it comes out. And when you are speaking it, you see the confidence. You see the boldness. You see the assurance. It's not a guesswork. It's 
not a weak word. So if you now send that word to any, day, any, any, any situation, any circumstance in life, that word is able to change it because it's carrying life. It's carrying power. It's not just a weak word because letter kills. If you are saying it without the spirit in breath, it will not carry any power. No effect. And all of this is the work of the Spirit. It's by the Holy Ghost. He teaches you, he shows you, he guides you, he directs you. He points out all this to us. That's how your life can be turned around. That's how your situation can be changed. That's how your life can be improved. So when you speak those words, you know what happens? Because the, the Bible says, the angel, they hearken unto the word of, and it has come from your soul. It has power. You are speaking God's word. The angels go into operation. They network things. They network. When you say the step of the Lord are ordered, they are the one that do all those. They are the one that order your life and order your steps. They are the ones that move people, direct people, organize situations and circumstances, and then organize you, you step into it. That thing you call miracle, they are the ones that are responsible. And this is what brings them into action. The money that you need, they are the ones that is going to link you or get somebody to do it or create opportunity for you. All kinds of, I don't know how it is going to be done, but I know that they are the ones that, and this is how it does. It happens. So if you put all these things in place, what does it take? It doesn't take you not anything. It's just commitment to the word of God. Settle down with God's word. Pay attention to it. Not this uh, three minutes or one minute meditation and all of that. Wait, you, and when you, and meditation will help you narrow your mind. Focus on a particular thing. Bring the word of God concerning that area. If, for example, the Bible says, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. You sit on that word. Sit on that word until that statement enters your soul. You say you have found favor of the Lord. That favor begins to show up. God's grace begin to radiate in your marriage. You see a change, a total change. Thou shalt say unto the righteous, it is well. You can be quoting it, but the thing is not coming from your heart. Because out of there, it must enter the heart. Not the head. So we go to the communion now. So when we come to the communion table, what are we going to be asking God? <clears throat> Remember what we said yesterday, the word of God 